Warm Hill Church. 800 years old and no spire. Very unusual. A fortified tower with battlements. That might have been more essential than a bell tower. Ah, Adrian. There you are. I've sorted everything out with Valentina for now. Father Frederick? My son? Mordred's wife was called Maria. Ah, that's good to know. Those are worldly, familial things. I'm sure we can address Mordred with that. Particularly if he loved her. Well, he murdered her. With a sword. Oh, that's excellent. For our purposes, I mean. Is that all you have found out? I found a book that belonged to Mordred, but all the pages are blank. How do you know it belonged to him, then? It's from his grave. Hmm. We can divert his attention from you with it. You'd better give that to me. Now we have enough information. Okay, so what happens now? Just lie down here and trust in Jesus, our Lord. Miss Antolini, are you recording? This is the exorcism of Adrian Gordon, present our Father Frederick, pastor of the Church of Wormhill, as conducting exorcist, and as witness and doctor, Prioress Valentina Antonini. It has begun, let us pray. In, In nomine, nomine Patris, Patris et Filii, et Filii et Spiritus, Spiritus Sancti. Sancti. Amen. Amen. Most glorious Prince of the Heavenly Armies, Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in our battle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of this world of darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. Come to the assistance of men whom God has created to his likeness and whom he has redeemed at a great price from the tyranny of the devil. We know your name, demon. You that calls itself Mordred. Release, Adrian, I command you in the name of our Lord. Stoop down in Peter's spirit. Mordred, you who made yourself guilty during life and therefore remain guilty in death and beyond, Go to the hell in which you belong. Go into purgatory, where you should burn sinner for all your deeds. Behold the cross of the Lord. Mordred, you who has raised the weapon against your brother Marcus, you who murdered your wife with the blade of your sword, Maria, whose soul has found no peace since then, Behold the cross of the Lord. Guilty you are, Mordred. And guilty you will always be. Bow beneath the all-powerful hand of God. Release Adrian and go there where you can receive the vengeance of God. <laughs> Father Frederick. I... I saw him. He spoke to me. It's... it's the wrong place. There's nowhere for him to go here. Not from his world. Oh, 
Oh, Father. Adrian. Adrian, wake up! Thank you again for helping me bring Adrian to the castle. But of course, miss. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, not at the moment. Then I'll come over again tomorrow. Have a nice day. See you. As long as Adrian's still asleep, I should let the Archbishop know about the current state of affairs. Your Grace, this is Prioress Antolini. There were complications. The exorcism failed. We... No, I don't think that was the reason. Yes. Yes, but that only makes sense if the demon is unknown. Correct, Your Grace. We underestimated his strength. Father Frederick is dead. He was thrown across the room, and I... Okay. No. The Guardian is doing well, considering the circumstances. Yes, Your Grace. I understand. I also think that the location is crucial. The Guardian had an image of Pictish glyphs with him. The same as those engraved on the Shade portal. That's exactly where the demon must be forced back. Yes, into the Black Mirror. It'll be no problem to get there. The demon itself tries to force its way to the mirror. It's drawn to it like a magnet. He won't cause us any problems until then. On the contrary, Guardian and Demon will be hard to keep apart. Yes, that's the other side of the coin. But, Your Grace, the man is probably the only one who can fulfill this task. Yes. Is there an alternative to exorcism? Of course, I'll do that. All right, then. First, I have to find the entrance to the catacombs under the castle. A chapel is mentioned in the records, which is found down there. That's where I guess the Black Mirror is. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Your Grace. Thank you. Ah, <sighs> good. As long as Adrian is still asleep, I can start looking for a way in. Most secret passageways in old walls have the characteristic of not being sealed completely airtight. That could help me. I let the dictaphone run during the exorcism. I can't understand a word, even though I understand quite a few languages. But... That must be a very, very old one. Matches. They're from a cafe in London where I met the Archbishop a few days ago. The Bible gave me much strength when I needed it. I think everyone should read it at least once. The Gordon file from the Vatican Archives. The last entry is from 1923. It notes the handing over of the Guardian position to Victoria Gordon. Right at the front of the file is a copy of a letter from Marcus Gordon. In it, he says that the entrance to the shade portal is sealed with an altar. The underground chapel was consecrated and prevents the shades from entering the catacombs.
The floor of the library is higher than the rest of the rooms on the ground floor. Perhaps the secret entrance is hidden under it. Or maybe just old-fashioned underfloor heating. The floor of the library... Perhaps the secret... Mainly lexicons and biographies about British lords. I found the book about the guardians here. Mainly lexicons and bi... There's only English literature here. Shakespeare, etc. I've already read them all. There's only... A mighty pillar. The wooden cladding is decorated with carvings. A mighty pillar. The wooden cladding. A mighty pillar. There were still some old tiles stored in the cellar. If no one had saved them back then, then the whole floor would have had to been relayed. The Gordon family crest, a shield with blue background and five golden lilies. The entrance to the catacombs used to be under the foundation stone, but Marcus had it sealed off. Now it's only a cellar down there. I wanted the rubble to be stored in the hall, so that the kids that sometimes meet outside the castle don't injure themselves. But I didn't think it would be so much. The wonderful cutlery didn't survive the fire very well. I've stored the remains in boxes upstairs. I was almost killed by a ceiling beam during the first inspection with the workmen. That's why there are supports in here. I'm sure there's wine stored in these barrels. A dustpan and brush. These are clearly too small for the current condition of the castle. Creepy darkness. That reminds me of... Something very unpleasant from my childhood in the convent. The wine barrels have been empty for decades. The last generation of Gordons were tea drinkers. The sewer system under the castle couldn't deal with all that firefighting water. Three weeks ago, the water in the cellar was still up to my knees. It'll be months before anyone will be able to access the sewer system without diving equipment.
Can't get any further here. The corner's just a last resting place for junk. That's the main switch for the cellar. The electricity has been switched off completely for safety reasons. The well seems to be dry. A, a water pump. The workmen brought it with them to pump out the cellar. This was actually only rented for a week. The well seems to be dry. There are only Victoria's papers here. Bank statements, bills, and so on. They're of no use. Black mold. According to Greg, it was caused by the extinguishing water, which offers an excellent breathing ground for molds once it's soaked into the walls. Black mold. Greg was going to repair the grandfather clock, but he never got around to it. A statue of the Virgin Mary. She was venerated for her humility and her firm belief in God. I didn't even like horses when I was a little girl. I prefer small animals. A plain marble pedestal. I almost like it more than the sculpture on it. The Gordon family tree. Many of the guardians were women, Isabella, Emily, Rosa, but also Marcus Gordon, Albert, and Durham. There are records on them in the Vatican Library. The Gordon, many, but also Mar Paintings tell a lot about the period in which they were painted. Fortunately, these ones weren't too badly damaged by the fire.
When I first came here, this room wasn't being used. I've had everything that's still usable brought into here. Lady Victoria was always very vigilant when I was in the room. I hardly had the chance to have a look around. Well, she'd understand now. The image of a beautiful woman. I'm thinking that must be Maria. I completely forgot about the machines. As soon as all of this is over, I'll have them picked up. Just a minute. There's a syringe here with adrenaline in it. I'll take it with me just in case of an emergency. Victoria's dressing room. The only area in this room I could have a look at. But in vain, though. There really are only clothes here. Those are all things that were close to Victoria's heart. But there's nothing of interest to me there, though. There's only jewelry in here. Two necklaces, a pair of earrings, and rings. It's all silver and stylish. Huh. The jewelry case weighs at least five kilos. And what is that? There's some kind of flap on the underside. But how do I open it? I can't see any keyhole or anything like that. I'll show it to Adrian as soon as he's awake. Perhaps he knows something about it. Even though she was really ill in her final days, she still set great store in keeping a well-groomed appearance. There you go. The flame flickers here. Hmm. There's a draft. And this room has no windows. I guess there's a cavity behind or in the pillar. Hmm. But how do I get at it? Why didn't I think of that sooner? This plate can be removed. Aha. Uh -huh. There's a metal wall behind it. And there's a strangely shaped hole in it too. A keyhole, I guess. The hole is the shape of a cogwheel. A normal key definitely doesn't fit in here. The hole is the shape of a cog...
Adrian, how are you doing? Uh, hung over. What happened? You suddenly lost consciousness during the exorcism. Did... Uh, did it work? Is Mordred gone? What about my eyes? Are they still black? There... were a few complications. So... it didn't work? Unfortunately not. It doesn't seem Mordred can be cast out with prayers alone. Strange. It always seems to work in the movies. Maybe it was the wrong script. The Bible. Yeah. Your eyes are normal again. At least for the moment. But I'm afraid that it won't stay like that for long. I guessed as much. Why am I in the castle? I thought it wasn't safe here. That's true, but I had no other choice. Edward helped me bring you here. Edward? Huh. And where is Father Frederick? He's... still in the church. We're going back to him later. Father Frederick is out of it. Mordred's power was too much for him. We'll have to be quick if we're going to save you. What are we waiting for then? I feel... almost good. At least I'm ready for the final spurt. I have another idea of how we can get rid of Mordred. But for that, we must go to the Black Mirror, where the curse began. Where everything began? Victoria told me exactly that shortly before she died. I should go to where everything began, but, but I've got no idea where that is and how to get there. I found something interesting in the library. I think it's some kind of secret door to the catacombs. A secret door in the library? Let me guess. It's locked, right? And you've got no idea how to open it. I was hoping you could help me. Why not? I haven't got anything else planned. Adrian? Hmm? Have you got any idea how to open this? I mean the secret compartment on the bottom. Seems to be a very complicated mechanism. Yes, um, of course, there's that way too. Adrenaline. It's usually administered intravenously and ensures that the cardiovascular system works again within seconds. It's, um, it's for an emergency in case, yeah, well, Mordred attacks me. A golden sword hilt from Victoria's jewelry casket. It's decorated with four gemstones, probably rubies. There's a fifth socket there too, but it seems there's a stone missing. The sword hilt fits perfectly, but nothing happens. The hole is the shape. Adrian? Hmm? It's not working. You think that's because of the missing gemstone? Could be possible. The question is, where is this stone? Could be anywhere. Could have been lost hundreds of years ago. I don't think so. 
If the key had been broken for a long time, why did Victoria hide it? No, I think the stone is missing intentionally, as an added safeguard. You know what I mean? Yeah, but where should we start looking? Did Victoria give you anything before she died? Something that a guardian would really need? A signet ring or something similar? Hmm, no. Valentina. Yes. Someone's leaving me messages describing the virtues of a guardian. You don't happen to know anything about that, do you? I wrote them. They were tests to see if you could become the next guardian in spite of the curse. I had assumed that apart from Victoria, there was only Angelina. But she was nowhere to be found. There was no time. Victoria lay on her deathbed. She was the last guardian. It had to be settled. When we heard that you were maintaining that you were a Gordon and were also innocent of any crime, then the Vatican changed its plan. We had to assure ourselves that you were still of pure heart. And you passed all the tests. But you weren't there. True. I wasn't there. <sighs> all right, Miss Undercover. The room in which Mordred crossed over into me. Do you know anything about it? What kind of room was it? A kind of ritual chamber. Skulls everywhere, a throne. They investigated a ritual chamber in the old academy. But all the records were lost in a fire around 1512. And the knowledge of it was lost in the process as well. So no, I know even less about it than you do. So what actually is this black mirror, then? We think it's a kind of... portal. And where does it lead? Nobody knows exactly, and it's a dangerous thing to investigate. Mordred tried, but the black mirror enslaved them. Pope Innocent III believed it might lead to the destruction of Christianity. What we know for sure is that it's older than anything else on Earth. I thought it might have been built by pagan druids or something like that. It's much, much older than that. The druids used it for ceremonies, yes, but they definitely didn't build it. It's been there since the dawning of time, so they say. Holy crap. So, so what is it then? We can only speculate. The mirror attracts evil, or how should I put it, absorbs it. According to the old druidic scriptures, there were regular human sacrifices. Apparently, the altar table in front of the Black Mirror portal was already drenched in century-old blood back then. The souls of the sacrifices are drawn into the mirror, but only if they're absolutely evil. The soul of a good person cannot enter the mirror. It seems to be something like... yes... like... The gateway to hell, perhaps? Yes. And no, not just the gate, but the mirror too. Glancing into it reveals the innermost self. It reflects the soul for everyone to see. I wonder what the Pope would see if he looked into it. And all the dignitaries of the world? <laughs> no wonder the entrance has to be guarded. But times have changed. Why don't we just have a look at the thing? Purely scientifically, I mean. Evil can also break out of the mirror. Its effect is unbound. You can feel its power yourself. Who's ever susceptible is enticed into evil. That's why life in the castle is so dangerous. It's right within its sphere. Mordred was... changed. The spark of evil that always smoldered within him was fanned into a blazing fire. He did everything he could to open the portal. Rumors suggest that he almost found the mechanism. <laughs>